Tactical knives have never been my shtick, my cup of tea, or even my guilty pleasure, but they are unquestionably a popular subgenre in the greater knife world. I mean, after all, knives at their core from the very beginning were created to serve one specific purpose, to kill. Please be kind, YouTube, this is a history lesson. I have, however, always had a certain level of fascination and appreciation for automatic knives, primarily side open push button automatic knives, and even more specifically, Protect knives. So when I heard the folks at Protect knives were partnering up with the tactical knife designing legend, Bob Terzola, well, I couldn't get my credit card out fast enough. <laughs> This is the Protect Knives ATCF Auto, an ultra high-end USA-made push-button automatic knife that is based off of the timeless Terzola Tactical ATCF, which of course was designed by the great Bob Terzola himself. Fun fact, before we go any further, Bob Terzola actually is credited with creating the term tactical knife, which is absolutely mind-blowing to me as I sit here researching for this review. Aesthetically, it is a seemingly simple design. Clean, straight lines, subtle splashes of jimping and texturing in just the right places, almost unnoticeably subtle ergonomic lines across the bottom of the handle. It is, closed up at least, an knife. Aside from its flashy tuxedo colorway, it is the textbook image of an knife. I'll look it up, it's right there in the Encyclopedia Britannica. Don't look it up, I made that up. Opening this piece up, we are met with a nearest, makes no difference, three and a half inch long stonewashed drop point blade done up in good old CPM Magna Cut. Now, feel free to correct me in the comments, but I do believe this was Protect's first time ever using the new uber hyped up steel on one of their knives, which is one of the reasons I ended up picking one up for myself. Aesthetically, it's not quite as simple and clean as the handles, but we've got a flat grind that comes about 50% of the way up the height of the blade, a wild swedge out towards the tip that almost gives us a, a kind of borderline spear-like point, uh, and we've got this big wild thumb ramp sticking up like a mohawk, looking like it just stage dove into the pit at a late 90s pop punk show. So what we have here is a purpose-built tool in a tuxedo. Ivory micarta scales over a black coated aluminum handle, the same ivory micarta inlaid into the button, and a total of six T8 screws holding it all together. It's got a clean and elegantly simple 3D milled titanium pocket clip with hidden hardware, which is a nice touch. Not to mention, I believe this is the first time Protech has used titanium on a pocket clip. Again, feel free to correct me in the comments. Overall, that profile is immaculately clean, borderline barren. Everything about this knife serves a purpose. There is no flare, no wild machining or milling, no buck wild pocket clip, no crossbred hybrid blade shapes. It is a full-size push button automatic knife made to cut and conquer all comers, be them made of paper or made of flesh. Now then, moving on to the Ergos, and this is where the ATCF really shines. It is an absolute pleasure to hold and to use. Those simple, unnoticeable ergonomic lines gently persuade the fingers into the correct position. The pocket clip melts into the palm. The jimping on the crazy mohawk thumb ramp catches the fat of your thumb flawlessly to lock your hand into place. The way the bolster juts out just enough to hold your index finger back behind the cutting edge. The fact that every potentially sharp edge has been chamfered for comfort it's all magnificent, and even though we don't have any kind of forward finger toil or space to choke up, I still feel in total control of that slab of magna cut. You can, of course, comfortably pinch grip it for some fine detail cutting, but again, this knife was made with one purpose in mind, and I have to say, it's fulfilled that purpose insanely well. Not that I would know. And by that, I, I simply mean it, it is a borderline impossible knife to hold wrong. You have one or two grip options, you pull it out of your pocket, and your hand knows exactly where it's supposed to be every time. The ergos are top notch. Now onto the action. I mean, it's a pro tech. At the end of the day, I could skip this entire section of the review, but I won't, and that is because this might be the hardest hitting pro tech and or side open push button automatic knife that I have ever handled. The terminology hits like a truck really doesn't do it justice. It hits like a freight train. And if the ergos were any weaker than they are, it would fly out of my hand and stab into the ceiling every time I press that button. It is the very definition of idiot proof, as long as the idiot has a solid grip. 
Press the button and that blade snaps open so hard and with such aggression, your neighbors are likely to call the police and file a noise complaint. It is truly that wild. The button is nice and smooth and it has been recessed into the bolster to help avoid accidental presses. And when the blade swings open, it stays open. The lockup is obscenely solid. Unlike a lot of push button autos, the ATCF here has very, very, very little to no blade play, uh, which is incredible. I mean, I own 14 Protex and they all have a little bit of blade play. Not, not the case here. The action is terrifying and satisfying and God do I love it. And finally, the blade. Now, Protec isn't exactly the king of thin and slicey blades. In fact, they have something of a reputation for having some of the thicker factory grinds out there. And unfortunately, the ATCF is no exception. We've got a really thick and hardy piece of magna cut to start with, and because that flat grind only starts about 50% of the way down the blade height, we're left with a pretty thick and chonky final cutting edge. Luckily for me, the edge bevels were dead even on this model when it arrived, and I have had it reprofiled and sharpened by the legendary Mike Imler, so <laughs> these days, this thing is a cutting machine. Now, when I filmed this review footage, uh, we were working with the factory edge, and it was, uh, it was okay, at best. It's not a laser beam, you're not gonna do any S-cuts into a tissue with this, but it was more than capable of handling normal day-to-day -day EDC tasks. Paper, cardboard, boxes, you name it, little stuff. None of that gave it a problem at all. And again, this being the first time Protec used MagnaCut, their heat treat wasn't exactly perfect. I want to say, and again, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, they were running it around 59 or 60 HRC, which is not exactly peak hardness for this deal. Overall, the blade cut out of the box, and it took and has kept an insane edge, courtesy of Mike Gimler, for months, I mean, six months now. So I'll give the blade a five out of 10 for EDC, but a seven out of 10 for hardcore tactical use, whatever that means. So where does all this leave me with the Protec Terzola ATCF Auto? Well, I cannot tell a lie. I did pay for this, but I was lucky enough to get it early and I got a slight discount as well. Thank you, Protec, I love you guys. But for you, the buying public, you can expect to pay $480 retail for this, which feels like a lot. And honestly, it kind of is a lot. There are no two ways about it. That's that's a shitload of money. And it's one of the only things I dislike about this knife. I mean, even with the discount, I paid around $400. It is a legendary design and it is exceptionally well made right here in the United States uh, with love and care. And we have some pretty exotic materials at play. But honestly, I have to say there are better knives out there at this price point, and you, you could get two other Protex for the price of this one. However, if you love the Terzola name and you love the ATCF design, this is one of the cheapest ways available to get one, considering a real Terzola ATCF will cost you well over $1,400. And that's if you can even find one. It's aggressive and it's simple and somehow beautiful, yes. But at the end of the day, I really do, I think it's just a tiny bit too expensive, American made or not. And that's coming from a diehard ProTec fan. So until next time, thank you all so much for watching. Bye-bye now.